Hey guys, welcome back as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're taking a look at rotation number 7 of the Incarnate Genesis Adapters, and of course we're going to be touching on the normal rotation as well. This one is known as the Stalker Rotation for obvious reasons, yes you got yourself the Dread, the Despair and the Hate. On top of that, you also got the Cyber in case you farm the whole Cryotic and you got this melee weapon and the Zylock as well. The Zylock was recently brought by Barokitir, so I'm assuming most of you guys already have it, but wait on the Zylock. First of all, this one came out heavily bugged and I said from the get-go, you know what, don't waste your resources and time with this one, however, it has been fixed. Uh, half fixed. They fixed the line of sight issue with the explosion, but unfortunately, they're still not allowing multi-shot to do anything on the actual explosion, so you know what, forget about it for now. Also, we know now, Grendel Prime is coming and he will come with the Zylocke Prime, so might as well wait for the Zylocke Prime to use the Incarnate Genesis adapter on it. Now, for those of you that have already incarnated the normal Zylock, fear not, you don't need to farm another adapter. Nowadays, you can pluck out the Incarnate Genesis adapter and plug it into another weapon. However, it's not for free. It will cost you resources. So do bear that one in mind. As for the Cyber, haven't played with this one, can't really talk to it. From what I know, it's kind of the mechest weapon of the rotation if you don't take into account the Zylock. The Dread Incarnate is a very powerful ranged weapon and one of the best bows in the game right now. The problem with it is, it basically does the exact same thing the Paris does, only the Paris has a slight edge in performance. So basically, if you already have the Paris, if not, you gotta wait one more rotation because next rotation is gonna be the Paris. So, that you go. It's a great weapon and I hate saying that the Paris is better than the Dread because it always used to be the other way around but when it comes to incarnate weapons just go for the Paris. If power is what you're caring about, if you already incarnate one over the other, forget about it. They're basically neck and neck in terms of performance. Yes? Fantastic. The Despair. This is actually quite enjoyable to use. Basically you use it as a carpet bomber and who doesn't love a carpet bomber in Warframe? Now granted it does have its limitations especially because of the charge size or magazine size in incarnate mode but this is still one of the more nicer secondary weapons in Warframe and I do recommend you pick this one up. As for the Hate Incarnan, well, it fires a projectile so I guess I can let it slide on that. Essentially I got two builds on this one, the most common use builds in Warframe and the weapon will be doing fine with both. If you're interested in more melee gameplay, this is the melee weapon to go out of this entire rotation. Now, let's have a look at the normal rotation as well. If you guys are interested in the Warframes that are on offer here, you got yourself Ivara, Inaros, and Titania. I'm gonna be offending some Inaros fans now. I am sorry, this is a goddamn terrible Warframe and should only be used in solo play. Please don't go into public games using your Inaros. It's not the nice thing to do. Essentially, you gotta treat Inaros like smoking. We don't do that in public. There are special places to use Inaros, I mean smoking, don't pick up this Warframe unless, of course, you really need it for the mastery points or you simply enjoy playing by yourself. And of course, maybe you need it for the helmet and all whatnot. Ivara, however, is on the other side of the spectrum when it comes to the Warframe community at the very least. This is an extremely beloved Warframe because she is powerful, she is stealthy, she can stay cloaked forever, so a whole lot of players love this one, especially more newer players coming into the game. I have always preferred Loki because Loki is quicker, but that's not to say that Ivara is not an amazing Warframe, you also got a Prime, so honestly, you should just chuck her into the helmet system and use the Prime instead. She can be extremely powerful if you focus your build around her Artemis bow. No need to stay cloaked forever, okay? Nothing can kill you in Warframe if you know exactly what you're doing. And if you don't, uh, follow my guides. Finally, Titania. Ah, the speediest. I think this is the fastest Warframe in the game. Along with the Razorwing Blitz, she is absolutely insane. She is quick to the point where you cannot control because it will be borderline impossible to avoid hitting walls. She's an absolutely fantastic Warframe, one that I highly recommend. But once again, you got a Prime. Essentially, you got a Prime for all of these. So chuck the normal versions in the helmet and keep yourself the primes. You should prioritize your choice based on which of these Warframes is hardest to farm. And if I remember right, there were some nasty spy missions that you had to do for Ivara. Luckily for you, I got full and detailed guides on all of those Miami spy missions. You're gonna get them done nice and quick. And I do believe, my friends, that's pretty much it. As always, one of us been Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.